about this morning. I've got several people here that's going to have different things to say, but it's all going to be the same thing. Um, we, we've had some changes uh, in the storm's direction, some that are concerning us. We've had the opportunity this morning to talk with, the, with our state partners um, about the changes that we've seen overnight and earlier this morning. Colonel Baxley is here and will address some of the issues involving the storm. Uh, we've had conversations uh, with the governor and he, uh, of course, is very concerned about this storm. Uh, he has been since, uh, since, of course, early on this week, but because of the changes last night, uh, he shared with me this morning his concerns, and as we, as we progress through the day uh, into the evening, we'll, we're going to be keeping a very, very close watch on the storm's movement and how it would impact us in the lower part of South Carolina. There has been no evacuation changes at this point. We're still in a standby mode. I want everyone to understand that, standby mode. So those who have seen highway patrolmen and uh, South Carolina DOT uh, vehicles on the roadways throughout Beaufort County, they are, they are there in a standby fashion. We, we have not uh, looked at any lane reversals on 21 or 278, uh, but uh, in case we need to do that, and at some point if we need to do that, the resources are in place to do so, and we can do that in a very timely fashion. Um, I want to make sure because we've gotten a lot of messages uh, here in the communication center and the EOC about uh, seeing the DOT trucks and the highway patrolmen. That is, it, that is by design. They are there uh, for a reason. Our concerns, of course, that came up during the night uh, and early morning uh, or that's concerning us here in Beaufort County is uh, the impact of storm surge, the amount of rainfall that's expected um, based on the storm possibly turning more of a southwest uh, after impact and then what wind would we would see here in Beaufort County. Coastal impacts, of course, are always our causeways, our low-lying areas, and Colonel Baxley will address those. Um, storm movement, as we talked about uh, after landfall, is something that we've got to be very, very concerned with. Now, that's a post-storm issue. We haven't got to that point yet, uh, but uh, if in fact the storm does move southwest uh, after, uh, after landfall, then it will have more of an impact on us. Um, actually, we'll be kind of pinched between surge and, and rainfall. Uh, be very attentive. We'll repeat that again. Everyone needs to be very attentive and prepared uh, to move uh, uh, Inward and inward for us is not the evacuation routes that we've always used. Inward for us now would be moving into the state of Georgia and moving into the state of Florida. Um, we strongly urge those uh, that uh, can make the decision now and over the next 24 hours, if you have the ability to move inward to uh, the state of Georgia and Florida, uh, we, would, we would recommend that you do that uh, based on what information you're getting from us and based on your own common sense and looking at the weather and, and tracking the weather like you've done it. Uh, so uh, we're taking this storm uh, very, very seriously, uh, and so should you. Uh, and I've got representatives from uh, County Council, the town of Hilton Head, Bluffton, Port Royal, uh, and I, I know that they want to make comments as well. So first thing we want to do, uh, Neil, if we can talk about uh, what we've seen over the past 12 hours involving Hurricane Florence. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is the 11 o'clock from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see looking at this graphic that it's considerably different from what yesterday was. Yesterday, that error cone uh, was just north, depending on which graphic you looked at, either lying right over Beaufort County or just to the north and west of us. We're now well within it. And what the National Hurricane Center, who lays out this graphic, what they're trying to avoid is a windshield wiper effect, and those are their, their words, uh, with the track every update they do. You know, it's left, it's right, it's left, it's right. So they're trying to go down the middle of these slight changes and this is not an exact science. It never has been. It's very, it's very much better than it used to be, but it's still not an exact science. So they're trying to stay on a very cautious track, and they are encouraging everyone. And we have said this from the beginning of this event. This is going to be a statewide South Carolina event. 
and this is illustrating this and we always tell you as the storm gets closer we will know more well look at us now it is closer and we know a whole lot more we are looking at a potential <clears throat> right now of this storm making landfall somewhere along the South Carolina North Carolina coast somewhere uh, Myrtle Beach Little River Wilmington Southport that area and they're not sure if it's going to con it's going to stall right there for up to 24 hours or move slightly inland and stall and then begin to slide south and westward bringing a tremendous amount of rainfall uh, on the north side of the storm they're talking 30 inches of rainfall that is a huge amount if you if you go back in your memory to October of 2015 and the floods that the Piedmont and the upper coastal plain of South Carolina saw uh, nobody got to 30 inches uh, there were a couple of places that re recorded in excess of 20 and remember the catastrophic damage that that brought to us well now they're forecasting a possible uh, 30 inch rainfall in some locations uh, connected with the storm and not here in Beaufort County but whereas two days ago we were looking at you know maybe some tropical infused rains now we're looking at a considerable rainfall several inches we're looking at some uh, tropical storm force winds possibly uh, even a little stronger than that into the hurricane type range especially if it continues to turn slightly southward so again go back in your memory banks and look at Matthew Matthew was a wind lesson for us Matthew in Beaufort County never reached hurricane strength with the exception of one recorded gust at the Hilton Head Airport the Marine Corps Air Station never recorded a hurricane strength gust but remember the amount of tree damage we had the widespread power outages we were pretty much 100 percent customers uh, without power at the very end of the storm and then uh, it took seven days to restore 100 percent power to the citizens of Beaufort County uh, if then think about Irma last year not a whole lot of wind but we had uh, somewhere in the three to four feet of storm surge range well they've been calling for two to four feet at Edisto Island which is in the warning area we're still not in the warning area but we expect that to change at one of the next updates it did not change at 11 from the Hurricane Center it may change at 2 it will likely change at 5 if not probably at 11 tonight again we're waiting on this and they're making all their calculations and all this but Edisto is and if you drive out to Hunting Island Edisto is right across the sound you can see it the National Hurricane Center uses well-defined boundaries for their segments and the Edisto River is one of their uh, the south end of Edisto Island is one of their established boundaries so the storm's not going to recognize that boundary if they're going to get two to four feet of storm surge at Edisto our north facing exposures can expect the same thing <coughs> Dalto Island Harbor Island Hunting Fripp uh, the northern face uh, of the Beaufort of the Bluffton landscape along Colleton River and these areas if they're north facing and the wind is blowing out of the northeast uh, again a, a scenario such as Irma they're going to be seeing that two to four feet if that's what uh, the forecast holds so folks that are in that area folks that know what they already experienced in Matthew know what they experienced in Irma even though we are currently not under a watch or a warning even though we are currently not under an evacuation order from the governor these folks that live in these areas they know what they experienced you know what you experienced if you saw it and you don't want to be part of it again as the sheriff said now is the time to move but we're encouraging you to move southward because if this storm does it as being forecast with this left hand turn and sliding along the coast the central part of the state where we would normally evacuate to is going to become inundated and again we go back to October 2015 the roads uh, in Hampton County in Barnwell County in Aiken County a tremendous amount of flooding road closures bridge washes washed out all this sort of thing we're anticipating a repeat of that type of event so if you're not comfortable with it we're encouraging you to turn south Georgia and Florida wide open sunshiny uh, good shape down there for for the time being uh, ahead of us uh, so it's important that we prepare the sheriff mentioned again we've got everything we are in a full readiness posture all of our law enforcement our South Carolina DOT partners our public works partners at the county and municipalities we're all absolutely primed and ready to go that's why you're seeing the trucks on the side of the road uh, because if we had them where they're normally staged at the DOT guys for example come from Aiken that's a hundred mile trip we don't want to have to wait for them to make that trip so we are primed and ready to go 
if the governor orders it, if we have to throw a reversal into place to, to move a lot of traffic in a hurry, we can. That's what planning and preparation is all about. But I would encourage you again, think about what we've seen over the last three years. The flooding in the central part in October of 15, Matthew in 16, Irma in 17. And what we're seeing right now is for Beaufort County is all three of those events rolling together into one. We've had our lessons. Now it may be time to face the exam. Chairman of County Council, Mr. Somerville. Good morning. Thank you, Sheriff, and uh, thank you, Colonel Baxley, and uh, thanks so many people who have been actively involved in preparation for this storm for the last week or so and will continue to be involved all the way through the recovery phase. Um, I can assure you that there will be uh, medical services provided. I've just been in communication with Beaufort Memorial Hospital, and they're, uh, they're open, of course. They're receiving, uh, they're receiving patients from some of the areas that, that are under a mandatory evacuation. Uh, the emergency rooms open. Um, TCL, I think, uh, is, is going to be closed for the rest of the week. Uh, USCB is going to be closed for the rest of the week. Um, but I want to say a word uh, of caution to those of you who, who live anywhere where, where you dependent on a causeway to get to your to get to your home. Even though we're not under mandatory evacuation, uh, there are a lot of causeways in Beaufort County, and uh, those of you who are here last few years know what happens to those causeways when we get a lot of rain. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for emergency vehicles to get down a lot of those causeways. In some cases it's going to be impossible. So even though we're not under a mandatory evacuation, I hope you will consider moving to an area where you can be accessed. As, as the sheriff suggested, uh, Georgia and Florida, <laughs> it's a good suggestion. Uh, but uh, you have to use common sense. We're all going to use common sense. Uh, I also want to thank all of the leadership in the municipalities who've been working with us on a daily basis, the elected leadership and the staff leadership uh, to make sure that we're as prepared as we possibly can be. Thank you. Mayor Bennett. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate what you do. Your safety is obviously of paramount importance to us. Uh, I am pleased at the level of preparation, planning, and execution that has gone forward uh, at this point. Uh, we are prepared for whatever comes our way. Um, as the Colonel indicated, the uh, trajectory of the storm did take a southerly turn last night and I would urge you that if that is of concern to you and you have the opportunity and the means that you take this as a, as a chance to evacuate and move yourself to a safer position. Uh, as the sheriff indicated, uh, the states of Georgia and the states of Florida, uh, the traffic flow to those areas is, uh, is good <coughs> at this point. And I guess my second urge to you would be to remain vigilant to continue uh, watching trusted sources of information, whether that be from the Beaufort County Sheriff's Office, uh, the town of Hilton Head Island website, uh, signing up for their advisories, the same thing with the county's website, uh, but continue to monitor those and listen to updates from the Sheriff's Office and, and respond to those accordingly. Uh, we will remain uh, on watch, actively working on your behalf, and I have 100% confidence uh, and the people that are working right now, that they will execute perfectly on your behalf. So, God bless you all. Mayor Salka. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm not going to reiterate what everyone else said because I think we're all on the same page, but I do want to focus on a couple of things. I want to thank Sheriff Tanner 
and your team and Colonel Baxley for giving us up-to-date information. What this causes is for our municipalities to get out that information. So as soon as they know something, we know something, and we're going to get it out to you. If you have Nixle, I would urge you to sign up for that. Um, we have My Bluffton PD. Those are two apps you can sign up for. And you can go on any social media that's affiliated with any government and forget the rest. Because information going around social media that doesn't come from the Sheriff's Department, the county site, the town site, and the Bluffton PD site for Bluffton, that's the, that's the accurate info. And I think we all are given the same message. Um, we have a lot of residents in Bluffton that have made reservations in Jacksonville. And below, I would urge you to consider going that way because if this changes and Georgia changes, you may not get to your reservation. So I'm not scaring you, but I do want you to take heed to the idea of going south or going southwest um, before this affects Georgia. What we know is a storm is twice the size of our state. And you can see that on, on any of the maps that you see on the internet, twice the size of our state. Um, that's not something we mess with, and Colonel Baxley had said prior, any tiny movement right now isn't a tiny effect on our state. It's hundreds of miles that it can affect. So just be smart, be aware, be present. We plan, we prepare. I would ask all the residents to do the same um, and just be smart. So thank you again, Sheriff, and stay tuned. Mayor Kaiserling. Thank you. <clears throat> I want to, starting with the governor, to the sheriff, to Colonel Baxley, to the municipal managers and mayors, Paris Island, the hospitals. Um, for those who don't know, the decisions aren't being made arbitrarily. <clears throat> Bromage says that. Decisions are not being made arbitrarily. Um, people sit around a table and everybody talks to each other and give, try to give those who make decisions the best we can. Um, my first suggestion to the city is that if you were uncomfortable, if you had damage during Irma or Matthew, you may want to consider leaving. You're not being asked to leave, but we would encourage you to do what you think is best. You know what it is. Secondly, our sandbag operation, I think we've given away probably in, in the neighborhood of 2,000 sandbags for those who live in the lower parts of the city. Um, that will go back into operation again <coughs> today. Thirdly, the city offices will remain closed through the week, but <clears throat> enough of you can find me or the city manager or through our switchboard. There'll always be someone you can talk to at the city, if not someone at, at the county. But I, I have to stress to those out there, 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 there is uncertainty. Um, I think that the movement now to, to officially not evacuate, but to encourage those who feel the discomfort, who feel the threat, who've experienced the threat, to go ahead. And, and, and make that move. Otherwise, we're here, and you'll hear through the sheriff's leadership from us on as regular basis as possible. Thank you. Uh, Tom, do you want to talk about county government offices being closed, or you just want me to say that they are closed until further notice? That'll be sufficient. Okay. <laughs> I saved you a little trip up. Thank you. Highway Patrol, we got, uh, Gil, we got anything that we need to address? You covered it in your, uh, we read DOT, Transport Police, DNR, and Labor Red. Okay, DOT, any concerns from DOT? Yes, sir. All right. Neil, can you give just an overlay of the historic issues we've had with the flooding that we talked about earlier, some of the pinpoint locations? I know that, that uh, you know, last in Irma, Marisalka and I talked about uh, Brighton Beach. In those areas, so if you could kind of cover some of some of the areas that we talked about, just to remind people of those areas. Yes, I have the opportunity to give public talks all the time on preparation, and I always say that we're called the Low Country for a reason. 
and people look at me and what are you talking about? Well, during Matthew, and we had forecast this for years, Highway 21 at Gardens Corner was inundated with seawater from Broad River for about five hours over three foot deep. You could not travel north-south on Highway 21 out of, uh, out of Beaufort up into Gardens Corner and, and to reach the interstate because that was our only route and it was cut. Uh, the Highway 21 Sea Island Parkway at Lays Island Airport under both Matthew and Irma had about three feet of water on it. The uh, causeway to Warsaw Island went underwater. Causeway to uh, Harbor Island, I don't believe, topped, but it got really close. And, of course, we had the bridge wash out, not the bridge itself, but the causeway leading up to the bridge in both events. It was the east side of the bridge in Matthew and the west side of the bridge during Irma, uh, the Harbor River Bridge. So there's a lot of low-lying areas where water will go that people do not ordinarily see water. And they all of a sudden they're surprised. We had people in Ladies Island after Irma. Well, you didn't tell us that we were going to flood. We did tell you, you live in a low-lying area, you face the water. If you have the spring tides and you see the water come a little bit further up into your yard or onto your property than you're used to, well, this is going to be magnified many times over uh, from that. So there's a lot of places out there that will flood. If you see, if you have a nice marsh view vista somewhere, it's going to have water in it when this event's over, just like it did in Matthew, just like it did in Irma. So I would encourage you to think about that. Think about where you live, where your property is at, what vision you have normally, and then what happened during Matthew, what happened during Irma. If you saw water then, if it got up in your yards, if it got up to your house, then you're probably going to see it again. Then let's take and add in the rainwater. We, we have stormwater issues because again, we're the low country. There has to be somewhere for the water to flow to drain off. So if we're at a high tide cycle, and we get three inches of rain during that six hour period, there's nowhere for the water to go. There's no, there's, it can get to the drains and the drains are full because they drain out into the marshes. So if then water backs up uh, into the streets or in front of your neighborhood or through your neighborhood, you're gonna see that again. You've seen it before. It's gonna be at least that bad, potentially worse than what we've seen in the past. So you know, unless you moved here in the past week or 10 days and have no historical knowledge of this, your neighbors do. So that's, the, that's what you want to look for, is where we had that, those flooding issues, those stormwater issues, those inundation issues before it will happen again under this scenario. So that's, that's, that's our word of caution again. You know your historical uh, situation in your neighborhood. You want to take that into account. If you're not comfortable with that, if you're not comfortable, if your house is surrounded by 90 foot pines, uh, and you've lost one or two during Matthew, well, chances are you may lose one or two more. If you're not comfortable being there in that scenario, then we strongly encourage you to take off and go somewhere safe now while the opportunity is here and you can move safely about. was just reminded also that the county convenience centers will be closed too uh, through uh, till further notice, kind of like the county offices. Um, hospitals, uh, Last report, our hospitals in Beaufort County to include Coastal Carolina and Jasper County are open uh, and are, are currently operational. Don't know what changes may come. We'll just have to play that by ear over the next few days, but they are currently open, open and they're accepting uh, uh, patients uh, at, at all three facilities. Um, questions? We have some blueprints on that, but uh, you have to factor in evacuation. For us, if there is a positive side to an evacuation right now is we're not competing with Georgia and Florida. Georgia and Florida, Florida in this particular scenario are our allies and our friends because uh, they will be accepting uh, a lot of folks that decide to, to leave Beaufort County because we're not, we're not sending anyone northward. Uh, or northwest, we're trying to do south and southwest. So it, I don't have a, an answer for you other than the evacuation. If in fact we had to do one tomorrow morning, uh, our feeling is it would go fairly smoothly. Do you have any sense, and maybe not, um, of how many people have already left, and does, will that make and a possible evacuation tomorrow morning smoother? Well, that's changed quite a bit in the past 24 hours. Mm -hmm. 
you know, of course, a lot of people uh, got information early that there was going to be an evacuation call uh, yesterday, which there was, and, and there was a change, of course, uh, about 11.15 yesterday morning. So there were a lot of folks that left or had planned to leave and now uh, have stayed and are considering what options they currently have. Uh, and of course, it's our our position that we strongly rec recommend that you take those options and move if you can. Uh, just like the mayor said, if you're uncomfortable with what you're seeing uh, and you feel like uh, it, 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 you know, that we will have to look at the evacuation plan again over the next 24 hours, uh, then as Neil always says, uh, leave early and uh, in this particular case, you can leave early and you can't really go to the direction you want to. The direction you need to go is Georgia, Florida. So. Sheriff, you may just comment for those that might be looking to leave, when they can expect tropical storm force winds to arrive. <laughs> The National Weather Service told us that the earliest reasonable time was going to be uh, somewhere around midday tomorrow. The most probable time, uh, today's Wednesday, yeah. uh, the most probable time, so we've been on eight straight days now. Um, the most probable time would be Thursday evening, late Thursday. So the, the situation will probably start deteriorating overnight tonight, more cloudy, maybe some spotty rain, and then tomorrow through the day get progressively worse. Can you speak to the Jasper Shelter Colonel and when and if it would open? Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> Jasper is waiting for, the, for a decision from the governor's office about any changes in the mandatory evacuation. They are primed and ready uh, to open if they have to. There are now 26 shelters open across the state. The only shelter open in our conglomerate right now is in Bamberg County, and it is open and preparing to receive 250 evacuees from Fayetteville, North Carolina. So that is, that's some, some of the mutual aid we have in place to, to help out our, our neighbors. The shelters uh, in Jasper for Beaufort County residents are hinged on that, that change in the, in the status from the governor. Uh, if we request them open, if we see a situation, we can request them and they will come open, but we're not, we're not there yet. And I know you've, you've had your hand up three or four times. Mostly for Tina. Mostly, oh, I'll, get, I'll wait in. Sheriff, she won't shoot. <laughs> Don't go too far. <laughs> Stassi? Do you have the power over uh, Governor Henry McMaster to call an evacuation? And if so, when is the latest time you would do that? Well, I do not have the power to call uh, for anything over the governor of South Carolina. At this particular stage, uh, I work directly for the governor. Uh, so we have been in communication with each other. I can promise you that he is very, very concerned about what we're doing here in Beaufort County. He's watching uh, this telecast as we talk. Uh, and, you know, our position is, uh, and the decision we made uh, after our 9 o'clock briefing, is to urge every citizen in Beaufort County, and as Mayor Kaiserling said, if you're uncomfortable with what you're seeing and the information that you're getting about staying in Beaufort County, then it's time to relocate. And if, if, if we need to uh, uh, re-examine the evacuation, uh, that that will be something that uh, that we will be looking at between now uh, and tomorrow morning. Uh, so that, I mean, it could happen, and the governor is going to direct us to do whatever he feels is in the, uh, the interest of the citizens of South Carolina. And um, and you know he is he's he's worked very very well with us uh, over the past uh, few days, uh, but he's eager to know what we're doing in Beaufort County. Uh, and the decisions that we're making. He's comfortable with the, with the conversation we're currently are having, uh, but again, the storm will dictate uh, what we do next. It's unpredictable. Uh, it, we've, we've seen some changes in it that we don't like uh, that are different than yesterday, uh, and we're very, very, very guarded at this point as to what the storm will represent for Beaufort County. And I think, as I said earlier, every citizen should take the same position. Uh, you know, you need to make sure that you're following 
uh, any and all information uh, that we're sending out uh, and, and making a decision that's good for you and your family. Uh, and we're going to collectively make the appropriate decision for the county. Questions? Can you address the citizens who may want to leave but have employers who are saying still come to work because there's not a mandatory evacuation, they can't leave? I, that's difficult for us to address. Uh, I mean, that, those are decisions that, that are going to have to be made independently uh, because we're not under uh, an official declaration or, or uh, evacuation order, uh, and that does change things. Uh, but right now, we're just asking for, for voluntary compliance and everything we're trying to accomplish. Questions? I guess at this point, if there isn't an evacuation, and so people decide to stay, even if you're encouraging them, are they going to have you know emergency services and things available to them if they do stay? Throw that pods too, probably a little bit. Right. Again, we look at history. We will remain uh, available to respond to calls for service up until such time as the weather dictates we come off. Since Matthew, we have, through the 1033 program, obtained a number of uh, high water vehicles, uh, military surplus type stuff, Humvees, LMTVs, which allowed us in Irma to continue to patrol. Now, we still had to pull patrol cars off the road. We still had to pull ambulances off the road. But what we did during Irma is in several very specific scenarios, we put paramedics in those high water vehicles and responded to calls. So we'll continue to respond to the absolute best of our ability. If the situation uh, deteriorates to a point where it is it's unsafe for anything, then we will uh, pull off and we'll, take, we'll continue to take the 911 calls and prioritize them. And as soon as the weather allows us to, to get back out on the road, we'll begin re-responding re to those calls. At what point are you pulled off the road? Uh, for the average patrol cars, for the Dodge Chargers and the, the Ford Explorers, it is 39 mile per hour sustained winds, which is tropical storm force winds. We have to because they, they're just not strong enough to withstand a crosswind on a causeway or something like that. The heavier vehicles, we stayed out throughout all of Irma, and that will be dis uh, we really don't know what the limitations on those vehicles are as far as wind, because they weigh literally tons, and so we can continue moving around for a while and uh, we'll do it for as absolutely long as we can. Now, that reduces the, the amount, number of vehicles we have responding, but we do have them strategically placed throughout the county so we can maintain a presence. And the municipal police departments uh, have also done the same thing. This 1033 program has been a tremendous boon to us in acquiring vehicles like that that ordinarily we would never be able to get. So now uh, Buford has them, Bluffton has them, and I, Van, does Port Royal have any? <laughs> Port Royal has some also, so we can maintain a presence for a lot longer now than we did in the past. Uh, Town of Port Royal, Van, is, is there anything you want to address? And I apologize for. Okay, you, you good? Okay. Any other questions? I guess water and beach, you know, you guys have a lot of coastlines. There sounds like there's going to be some concern with, you know, waves and things like that in addition to wind. Any word to beachgoers or surfers or anybody who might be interested in bigger ways? Well, you know, of course, the, the undercurrent and, and the surge and all the other stuff that we look at uh, is, is in play currently and will be definitely for the next several days, probably into the middle of next week. Uh, so, I mean, this is something we're going to have to continuously look at. And, you know, and people just need to be cautious personally cautious to, to those things, even though I know we'll have a few that are daring, uh, but the less daring the better, and uh, we'll just have to keep a look on it, keep an eye on it. One more question. Come on. The sheriff just mentioned, it prompted me to remind you something. The winds will probably stop blowing uh, in tropical storm force type scenario under this, probably Sunday. But if we get the 30 inches of rain across the state that they're talking about, this event will go on well through next week, uh, probably into the following weekend. Widespread power outages, uh, again, through the inland part. We might not have the bridge washout problems in Beaufort County, but our neighbors in Jasper and Hampton and Colleton will because they suffered it in 2015. So we need to keep that in mind. That will affect everything. If Interstate 95 uh, were to get uh, interrupted in Clarendon County like it did in 2015, that affects grocery delivery in Beaufort County. 
if uh, if I-26 were to get interrupted, same thing. Commodities move every day by trucks, and if the trucks cannot roll, we're going to experience uh, issues that we need to be prepared for now. Now, I'm, so I'm encouraging everybody just think about this. Be prepared, not only for the storm Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but what may happen into next week. Be prepared for extended power outages. Be prepared for uh, some difficulty obtaining goods that you're used to just getting out and running to the store and getting. Uh, you probably don't pay a lot of attention to trucks, but they literally roll into the stores every day, sometimes twice a day, to, to the grocery stores, to Walmart and all this. That service might get interrupted because of the after effects of the storm. So we need to be prepared for that now. Are there any locations that people can get sandbags that you know of? The county is not uh, doing a sandbag operation. City of Beaufort was... City of Beaufort, can you speak to that? Are you still providing sandbags? Uh, where would they be at, sir? Outside the park. We, we will be prepping the sandbags. They will not be available today. They probably will not be available tomorrow if we post it in time. Okay. The City of Beaufort will be providing uh, sandbags. They're prepping them, but they're not available today or tomorrow. They will announce that, and it would be at Southside Park uh, when that becomes available. focus has been a little north of you guys. Are you going to have those people here should you experience it? Already been in contact with SCNG this morning. They coordinate that effort and Palmetto Electric. Uh, crews are already coming in. They have reserved hotel rooms and they will be pre-staging in county depending on the weather scenario. If it deteriorates to the point where they need to stage out of county for safety because if the trucks get damaged they become part of the problem and not part of the solution. Uh, so that already, uh, we all know the power company probably has the absolute best response program nationwide of, of any one entity, uh, and those trucks are already rolling uh, towards South Carolina to be prepared to, to respond to this. So yes, that, that's all, but when you, lose, you know, when you lose one pole, it's easy to go reset it. When you lose a hundred, it takes a while. Where can people report price gouging if they see it? Uh, the attorney, they can report it to us directly, to the sheriff's office or to the local law enforcement authorities, and we'll start the, the inquiry into it. They can report it to the uh, attorney general's office through their website, and they can report to the secretary of state's office. Uh, one other thing we need to remember, power outages affect sewer lift stations. Lose power, you lose sewer lift stations, you got a problem in your house. And that's as nice as I can put it. So keep that in mind. Just to clear, is, is tomorrow morning kind of a deadline, do you feel like, for, for an evacuation order to be able to get people out in time ahead of this? I don't think we're going to set a deadline. We're going to react as, as circumstances dictate. We, uh, we have been keeping a, keeping a very, very close eye on Jim Cantore. He's still in Wrightsville uh, Beach, North Carolina, and as long as he stays there, we feel a, little, a whole lot better for us, but we feel, uh, of course, sorry for uh, North Carolina and, and uh, Horry County. So we will uh, probably do another press conference if we think we need to. Could be later today, probably uh, tomorrow morning, uh, if we see the need for it, and we'll, we'll make sure and let you know. Uh, we'll give you, this, uh, give you some timely uh, advance notice. Uh, so thank you for coming, uh, and let's just keep reminding people how serious uh, this storm is and that everyone needs to take the, the same approach. So thank you.